So nine from I think two thousand and nine, and I I want to make sure of this though before I continue. Let's look it up on IMDb because IMDb will tell me things such as this. Nine IMDb, boom, it's right there. It is two thousand and nine. I was correct. I just want to make sure. Seven out of ten. You know, that's fair. You think it would have gotten a nine out of ten? Bam bam. <laughs> but no, obviously not. Honestly, I really like this though. Um, I think the last film that I reviewed today was American Gangster, but this, and it was, in my opinion, a little overrated. I gave it like a 7 out of 10. The critics' consensus was like roughly 8, um, 7.5.9 out of 10 kind of thing. And this one, it gets like a 7 on IMDb, but like a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I would put it above both of these. I really like this. I remember seeing the trailer for this movie when it first came out long ago, and I remember thinking it looked really cool, and be like, what is this? The animation, in my opinion, even though this is from 2009, I think it looks cool. I think it looks really good still. Uh, they have this post-apocalyptic world where these robotic rag dolls are running around trying to figure out where they come from. And basically you're trying to just be at peace because there's all these robotic monsters that are trying to kill them and stuff. So let's talk about the basic plot. I sort of just did, but I'm, I'll try to summarize it a little better. So it starts off, we see Nine, the main character, the main rag doll robot. I don't know how else to describe them. That's what they look like basically. It's kind of cool. It's sort of steampunk in a way, the way it's like these cloth elements mixed with metal elements. It almost seems like steampunk, but maybe it's not, but I, don't, I digress. The point is, Nine is the main character. He wakes up in this room, and they keep referring to it as the, the beginning room or the first room or something like that, because uh, I think that's where they all, all nine of them, I think nine is the last one. I don't think they... They show more than nine of these robots, but we find out that the reason that these robots were created is because the world has come to an end because of machines. A scientist created a machine that creates other machines and in turn created too many machines and they started to turn on humans and kill humans. Sounds familiar, sounds similar to something, maybe Terminator or Terminator 2. Yes, it's sort of like that concept. And I think that might be partially why I was so attuned into this, why I like this so much, because I really love that plot line, that basic sci-fi story, post-apocalyptic, gotta try to stop the robots from rebelling against you. It's exciting, I don't know, I, I always liked it. I, I'm a sucker for this kind of storyline. But also, it just, it looks really good. The actors are good. There's a lot of great performances from the voice actors, and American Gangster, which I talked about today, had a lot of different voice actors, I'm not voice actors, regular actors, but big name actors is what I mean. And this also had a lot of big name actors. So let's talk about that. So like I said, seven out of 10, which isn't bad, honestly, for MDB. Maybe that's a little more fair than the Rotten Tomato score. But yeah, I liked it. I might give it a little higher than seven even. We'll see. Um, Elijah Wood, main character, Jennifer Connelly, the one female of these ragdoll robots. Uh, Crispin Glover, like huge name, three right there. And then everyone else is sort of a big deal. Christopher Plummer. Oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure rest in peace now, but Christopher Plummer, a huge name, people that don't know that. John C. Riley, Martin Landau, like literally almost every name. It starts to, as you get to the, to some of the lower build voice actors that they're not as big, but the top one, two, three, four, six are all relatively big names. So that's pretty, pretty good, especially for an animated film like this. Um, and by animated film like this, I mean a dark animated film because this is a dark animated film. There's elements of death. You see like dead bodies and stuff. That's why it's, I think it has a PG-13 rating, which going into this, I would have thought it would have had like a, a G rating, you know, cause you see it or a PG maybe, but you see this kind of style and you think, oh, this is a kid's movie. It's not really. And that was another problem that I think a lot of people who don't like this movie had a problem with it is that it's a little dark 
with the tone and but that's the point though it's supposed to have this sort of dystopian post-apocalyptic future that's scary it's supposed to be unsettling you want you're rooting for these ragdoll robots and the scientist who created the machine i'm going back to the plot here the scientist who created the machine it was taken by they called the chancellor basically the government took the robot and made it into a killing machine that wasn't the intent uh, so obviously he didn't like that and he could, was one of the last people alive so he created these ragdoll robots so that life could continue and I don't know I think that's sort of a, a cool concept and a lot, of, a lot of the movie is about these ragdoll robots just trying to figure out where they fit in what's going on uh, nine being the most inquisitive they all have their own little little character traits and that's another point some people might say they're all one note you know all the characters are one note like the main character wants to see what wants to know what's going on um number eight they they're strong but don't do what they told number one they're stern they're the leader uh and they want to just keep people safe and like everyone has their own thing seven is adventurous and wants to go and see outside of the of the church where they all live and where they're being kept safe by one they all have their own different sort of personality traits and some people say that they're too one note, they're not three-dimensional enough. But think about it this way, because I, this is another reason why I really like this movie. is because the, the we, we find this out at the end also. So spoilers, spoiler alert, alert, but I still think the movie's enjoyable, even if you hear this. So spoiler alert, at the end, uh, we find out what they all are, what these robots are. They all have pieces of the scientist who I mentioned earlier, soul inside of them. So each one is a piece of his soul. So each one is like a part of his character because everyone has these different moods and different feelings. So I think that that was done really well. It sort of reveals at the end, so it makes sense because if you took all these different characters, put them together, you would have one three-dimensional character. And I get that that's the point some people are making, that it makes it less interesting. But I don't know, I think the story the visuals, there's enough there to to uh, entertain and keep you captivated. Also, there's these, I want to talk about the robot monster creatures, because th there's lots of cool like details and some things I didn't even notice, but looking in hindsight, it's really cool they put these details in here. Uh, like some of the robot monsters that are trying to kill the ragdoll puppets, or ra sorry, ragdoll robots, um, they have like animalistic features. So there's one that's like flying and it has the wings of a bat. And there's one that has the skull of an animal. I, forget, I don't know, I'm not sure what kind of animal, but you can tell that they took like these pieces of, of wildlife and sort of combined with the, the metallic machine. It's, it's just interesting. It's visually cool and it, it's a cool idea. It's a different idea. So I like that. And also there's one that's like a caterpillar, which is pretty cool. So yeah, there's all these different cool ideas about the movie. And another thing that I didn't notice, this detail, was that with the ragdoll robots, there's obviously one through nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I didn't notice that, but I was watching a review of it online, because I like to do that to compare before I review sometimes. And in one of the comments, someone said, one of my favorite parts about this movie is how the detail where you can see each robot, one through nine, gets increasingly more in depth and better made. The first one, the stitches are kind of sloppy, but by the end of nine, nine is the most put together. It looks the best. It looks the most pristine out of all of them. They all have their own little quirks and and then like uh, four and five or three and four, I think, they, they're uh, gloves, like you can see how he was going through trial and error trying to figure out how do I make these robots? How do I how do I make them look nice and stuff? So that's a cool detail that I didn't even notice, but I thought that was a noteworthy thing to bring up because it looking back, yeah, they, they absolutely did do that. Same with like number one is by far the most rugged of them because he's the first one uh, and his eyes are squinty and it works as it, with his character being a bitter old man. So it's, it's just little things like that for me I really, really liked this. I thought it was very well done. Uh, and I was captivated pretty much all the way through. I, I was in the zone. 
with this movie. Uh, there's some sad bits, and I'll talk about the ending a little more. And I was confused at first, but it, then it made sense. Uh, because, and spoiler alert, almost everybody dies at the end, except for seven, nine, and three and four, the twins. But it's, and you, there's a point where you're like, okay, they, they saved them. There's a bunch of them more than that that are alive. And you're like, oh, this can't, there's still a little bit left. There's something that has to happen. Of course, the machine comes back. They thought they blew it up. Uh, it was cool, though. And then we have all their bodies are in different spots. And what I thought they were going to do, and I thought it was going to be so cheap, but they didn't do it like this. So I liked it, after all. I thought that they were going to put them all in the graveyard and then have them go back to their bodies and they all be okay. But they actually killed them off. And I thought that was really good because it showed real stakes in the film that it's not all for naught because often they'll do that in a movie where they're like oh actually everyone's okay they, they'll kill off characters but then bring them back and it's like uh I, I think it it takes more guts and tells a better story usually anyway if you do actually kill the characters so i like that uh it's a little sad but it's it's well done and you feel for, i i honestly I, I feel for these characters a little bit because they don't know what's going on. They're just trying to figure out this world, this dark, scary world with all these robot monsters. Um, and honestly, overall, I re yeah, I really liked it. I'm running out of things to say. And this movie's short. Like, it's only 81 minutes or 80 minutes. And comparing this, to, again, to American Gangster, two very different movies. But this one worked better for me, personally, um, for multiple reasons. But I... And honestly, most people will tell you American Gangster is better than this, probably. But they're different. And I'm only comparing them because I reviewed that today. But, no, Nine's really good. Uh, I liked I liked the the whole movie, the visual look, the, the storyline. It was cool. Uh, let's look it up on, on Rotten Tomatoes because I am, I am curious to see what it got on there. 58%, I think I guess 56, I was close, uh, 58% Rotten Tomatoes, 56 audience score, so that's like about where the general public lies, 50-ish to almost 60-ish, but then IMDb at 7, and I think that's closer to what it deserves at least, again, I'm going to give it a little higher, because I really liked it, uh, some things don't maybe fall through all the way, like I could have had a few more, a little more jokes, Maybe, like, there's a lot of areas where it, it just feels a little too serious. There's, like, there's like a few, like, minor cute joke moments, but they, there's hardly any humor in it, which I don't mind for the most part. Like I said, I still like the film. But, yeah, a few jokes wouldn't have hurt it, I, and especially when you have people who you know who can do comedy, like John C. Riley, in the film, and Elijah Wood, even. We know he can do comedy now. He's in, he's in a lot of, of comedic roles. Dirk Gently, uh, as well as, well, he's in, a, he's in a lot of stuff, but Dirk Gently, I think of right away for being kind of funny, um, uh, oh, and that movie about zombies, I forget what it was called, but anyway, I'm getting off topic, my point is, I really like Nine, and I would recommend it if you haven't seen it, this movie's on, I was, like, trying to think, where did I watch this, on Amazon Prime, if you want to watch it, check it out on Amazon Prime, and now I think I'm going to end the review because I, I'm running out of stuff to say about it. But yeah, I did like this movie. It's not perfect. I admit to that, but I do think it's underrated and I really liked it. Um, I love the look. I love the basic concept of the post-apocalyptic future. Uh, there's no humans left, just these ragdoll robots trying to figure it out. And they tried to, what was I going to say? They, they based this off of a short film, which I th think is a noteworthy factor. The director, let's look at the director, actually. I closed the IMDb page, let's just get it back real quick. Um, directed by, let's look here, Shane Acker. He made a short film about this. And that makes sense, right? Get the guy who made the short film to direct the, fil the feature length film. So I think that makes sense. It had nine nominations for awards, nominated for an Annie Award, nominated production and design, nominated for best movie of animated movie of the year. 
It's got a lot of nominations, no wins. Fair enough, though. It got, I think it got, it got nine nominations. Oh my god. <laughs> I wonder if they did that on purpose. Nine nominations for the movie Nine. And they released this movie on the ninth day of the ninth month in 2009. So that's, I mean, obviously they did that on purpose. But it's funny. And yeah, to everyone, lots of people think that Tim Burton directed this. It's one of those where they put, like, Tim Burton is on as a producer, and then everyone assumes that he directed it too, but no, he did not, Shane Acker did, uh, I like this movie, and yeah, there's like scary movies, scary parts of this movie, I mean, uh, so I, it's PG-13, don't go showing this to little kids and stuff, they, it, it may seem like a kid's movie, but it's a little scarier than that, if they can handle it, show it to them, but I don't want to be responsible for nightmares, so if you, but if you want to see this, it is on Amazon Prime, I'm actually going to click on Shane Acker here and see what else he's done. He's known for this movie, and he's known for this movie again. Oh, yeah, he's known for the short film. I was like, why is there two nines? One of them is a short film, of course. Uh, and Total Recall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's just visual effects. Not the original Total Recall, the shitty one with Colin Farrell. But, uh, oh, okay, so he's mainly known for doing visual effects. That makes sense, because he made this computer-generated film. Oh, it's all coming to light here. Okay, so that's cool. I wanted to find that out. So, overall, I did like this film. Like I said, I'm going to rate it and finish up the review. But overall, solid movie. In my opinion, I liked it. Some people would say it was lacking in some areas. And I think, even if it was, maybe in some of the areas, I agree, like maybe the characters aren't fully three-dimensional, which I discussed, it still delivers with the visuals, the story, the characters, in my opinion. But the visuals are like the biggest part, the best part, in my opinion. Uh, and some people say the characters aren't that great, but we, like I said, we've talked about this, why? They're all pieces of a whole character, and I think that's why it works. In my opinion, so boo, yakasha, let's end this review. I'm going to give this, I'm tempted to give it 9 out of 10, but I, I don't think it deserves that high. Um, but I'm going to give it a decent, I'm going to give it close to that, honestly. I like this a lot. I would recommend it. If you haven't seen it anyway, if you know you don't like it, don't watch it, I guess, because there's so like 40% or whatever, 42, 46% of people don't seem to not like it, give or take. But anyways, I'm going to give it 8 Point five out of ten dives. That's what I feel right now. I really did like it. Was it perfect? No, but it was really fun. Great voice actors. Pretty cool story overall. I like the post-apocalyptic stuff, obviously, like I mentioned. I like the design of the robots, the look, the little details in the film. I quite enjoyed this. So yeah, 8.5 out of 10 dives for nine.